Hey everyone, my name is Daniel, and in this exciting video, I'm going to talk about GPT-5, which is available in Microsoft Copilot Studio. And I'm going to show you all the three different versions of it available. Two of them are when you build agents, and one when you build prompts. So stick around, this is very exciting. But first, here's my intro video. So yesterday was definitely an exciting day because the announcement of GPT-5 was made on OpenAI. There was even this countdown that was going on. And then actually we had a full introduction made of all the things which came along with this GPT-5 across different platforms. This was a really exciting keynote type of a scenario to watch. In addition, it is also now available in your chat GPT. So when you go in over here, by default, you will see chat GPT-5, and over here, you can start testing and playing with it. Simultaneously, Microsoft also made their announcement yesterday, see August 7th, and they went ahead and talked about how GPT-5 is available in Copilot Studio and gave a good breakdown of all the things that come along with it. They actually talked about the two different versions of GPT-5 that come with Copilot Studio and exactly what all they can do with it. In addition, the third option, which is also available when you're building prompts, and this is called as GPT-5 chat. So what I'm gonna do next is actually walk you through creation of it. And for chat, we will even do a side-by-side -side performance testing. So let's take a look. So here I am in my Copilot Studio, specifically in the preview section and I went ahead and created two specific agents. I call one as the agent GPT-5 auto and the other one ending with reasoning. Now, the good thing is when I first created the agent out of the box, uh, it went ahead and used the GPT-4.0 as the default. So I say that's a good thing. Like it's not forcing us to use the GPT-5 out of the box. Even though I'm in the preview section, it still goes back to the version four. So I'm happy with that. However, now if you go and click on this ellipsis, click on edit, and right over here, where you see that GPT-4.0 default, when you click on it, you see the two options, GPT-5 Auto and GPT-5 Reasoning. Keep in mind, this is all experimental. I mean, if you think about it, it just released yesterday, all right? So you definitely don't wanna go production with this out of the box. However, they are there available. So like I always say, look, touch, play, don't go production with it. So for this one, since it is the experimental one, I'm gonna select the experimental and I'm gonna click on save. And then I'm gonna go X out over here. And now when you come out over there, this will change to GPT-5 auto experimental. And I do the same thing for the reasoning. Come back over here, go to reasoning, select the ellipsis, click on edit. And in the drop down, go ahead and select reasoning. It is also experimental, but I'll select that one, click on save. Once the saving is completed, I'll go, I'll X out from here, and then this will be updated to GPT-5 reasoning. So now we've got our two agents. What I wanna do is some testing with existing knowledge that I have. So as a test, I'm gonna use my SharePoint Sites document library as my knowledge, and I've got two of these documents. These are actually PDF files for Power Platform licensing that was released in August of 2025. Um, so that's what I'm gonna do. So as you know, I come over here, specifically the GPT-5 auto, click on add a knowledge. I'll select my SharePoint, browse items. Um, this is the site, all things AI. I'll select it. It's under the license information document library, subfolder license information. Select that, click on selections. And for now, I'll just keep things as is. I don't wanna mess things up too much. Um, so this is going to be my knowledge. We'll just make sure that the knowledge over here gets added and it's all ready because then I've got a few prompts that I want to test. So since I'm in auto, the conversation type that I want to have with this GPD-5 falls in this category. So it's for simple or routine prompts and instructions. So here, the prompt that I'm going to use is specifically this one. It says, I am building an agentic solution whose knowledge is a document library in SharePoint site. The agent will be used 10 to 15 times a day, up to five concurrent times. What are the license requirements for the solution? And I know, I know some of you are joking, saying, man, Daniel, you're a little gutsy over here. You're using Power Platform license as your test scenario? Well, this is GPD-5, all right? Let's throw the worst case scenario and see what happens. So I'm going to hit enter or send over here, and it is processing all this information. Now, one of the things when I was reading up about GPD-5 is it's supposed to be really fast. 
Now, this is a convoluted question that I've asked. So let's see how fast it responds and the type of response that is given us. So it is still thinking over here. Granted, the question is pretty complex. Uh, so let's see what response it comes back with. And there you go. It's actually giving me a fairly good breakdown. And remember, the question that I asked was, what are the license requirements for this overall solution? So I didn't even say I'm gonna use Power Apps or Power Automate and chat. No, I just gave it a very wide description as in a solution. And it came back pretty well. It says the Microsoft Copilot Studio licensing, I should be used that. Uh, end user access to the SharePoint via the bot, as a knowledge, okay. It also gave me some recommendation for Azure AI services and all of it. Like it gave me a really good breakdown. Now it also said, if you'd like, I can map out the exact license combination you need for your scenario, including whether you can avoid giving every user the E3 and the E5 license. It says, do you want me to prepare that license matrix for you? I says, yes, please. It says, yes, please create the matrix, all right? So now I've gone ahead and given it my prompt. The conversation is still going on, all right? So let's see what it comes back with. Now in this scenario, I really don't see that little animation which usually happens over here. So I know it is thinking, but I wish that animation piece came up over here. So let's see what it comes back with, all right? I'd be expecting a matrix. And there you go, it's actually giving me a really good matrix from this standpoint. In addition, the last piece that I wanna try is this option, it says, do you want me to prepare the cost estimate? And I'm gonna say yes. I'm gonna say yes, please prepare the cost estimate, all right? So I've gone ahead and give it the final prompt. Again, we don't see that cursor type of animation that's going on, but we are waiting over here just to see how fast it can go ahead and use specifically the GPD-5 Auto. And it does a pretty good breakdown, all right? It's giving me a full cost, full rep, rep, it's giving me a full cost, full breakdown of each and every type of scenarios over here, specifically the service. So I'm pretty happy. This was a good thorough test of how fast a response I got with my knowledge of SharePoint, specifically using GPD-5 Auto. What I wanna do is switch gears now and try the GPD-5 reasoning, because as the name says, this is what you use for deep reasoning. And I have a pretty complicated prompt that we're gonna throw at that agent and let's see how it responds back. <clears throat> All right, so like I mentioned, this agent is using the GPD-5 reasoning model. However, I'm using the exact same set of knowledge from that SharePoint library that I just talked about. But over here, let's take a look at this prompt that I wrote up. Uh, I'm saying, I have a business need to build a solution where end users need a mobile way to submit a request and need a response to the risk request within 24 hours, either via email or text messages. Yeah, I'm being very descriptive over here. All right, let's keep reading. Any information gathering for this request needs to be done via email or in Teams. Finally, updates of this request should be handled via an agentic path. The agent will be used 10 to 15 times a day, up to five concurrent plans. Which all Power Platform services should I consider using to build the solution and what are the license requirements? So yep, I'm throwing a big one. Why? Because this is GPD-5 reasoning. So here you go. I'm going to go and click on send. Um, and now it is going to go and start doing the reasoning, the thinking, but I'm really interested to see the response that is giving it. Now, keep in mind, this is GPT-5 as well. So I am expecting a little faster response over here. We're still waiting. I'm still talking to you. Let's see what it comes back with. All right, it is going ahead and giving us this full breakdown and it is giving me a lot of information. So I can see that the deep reasoning is at work over here using the knowledge that we get, got. Now, I was expecting a little faster response initially. However, while I'm still talking, this thing is giving me a plethora of information. So I'm, so I'm overall fairly impressed with how detailed it is. I was just expecting a little faster performance. But I like the conclusion. It says, if you share whether requests are internal or external and whether SMS is a hard requirement, I can size the exact licenses and estimated counts for you. So I'm gonna actually say that it says yes please size the exact licenses licenses and the and the estimated monthly cost i'm going to go and hit enter and the same thing happened over here as it did before is that when i'm continuing the conversation this animation piece is not happening but you and i know from the first example that it is still thinking so i'm going to let this finish over here 
see what it comes back with. Now, in this case also, again, it is reasoning. So there is definitely some deep reasoning that is going on. Um, again, it's using my two grounded knowledge, which in my case is SharePoint site. So definitely some thinking going on in the back. And there you go. It's actually started to go and give me this breakdown. And it's giving me good assumptions based on the context. I said that I can have up to five concurrent users. And that's always a big, and that's always a tough thing to judge about the message consumption on the Copilot Studio side. Uh, so I'm hoping that this will actually give me this good breakdown. Um, so yeah, it gave me a lot of links over here, but as I scroll up, this is the information that I was looking for specifically about the breakdown of everything. Like if I'm going to be using Power Apps, then this is the breakdown. If I'm going to be using Power Pages for external, this is the breakdown. So it really understood what I was asking for and it gave me a really good breakdown. Now, definitely I will have to massage this data and everything, but hey, as far as the GPT-5 reasoning goes, this is pretty awesome. Now let's look at the third part, which is the prompt. And over there, we will do some performance testing. So back again in the preview section, I go to tools, I click on plus new tool, and in the prompt, when I select it, it takes me to this page, the default model that it selects is GPT-401 mini. However, when I click on the drop down, I have now GPT-5 chat, and it says that this is a paid preview. Basically what it is saying is that even on the preview side, you will have to pay a little bit for it. So that's what it is. And over here, I'm gonna replicate something that I did before. There's actually a whole set of videos I had released on the AI Builder side, but now you can go and use that prompt over here as well on the Copilot Studio. So I've basically just gone ahead and put the exact same thing. Um, and if you're interested about all this that I've done, I've put the link in the description below, go watch that video. So the last thing that I wanna do is basically go ahead and rename this. I'm gonna call that as my, um, I'm gonna call it as my GPT-5. Uh, custom prompt, pick a P a little bit caps on this side, um, and I'll go ahead and click on save, all right? This pop-up window came in, so I'm basically just gonna go ahead and say copy it over here from the name and put it in the description, and then I'll go and click on add. So we've gone ahead and created our tool, which is a prompt specifically using GPT-5. Um, so let me just come back over here. Let me click on this edit. I'm gonna click on this edit over here again. I'm gonna click on this edit, and then I'm right next to it, I'm gonna go ahead and get the other one, which is right here. Now, this is the one that I have used before, but it was using GPT-4.0. Now we are using GPT-5. So what I'm gonna do is as a test, I'm gonna give both of them the exact same document. And what I like about the prompt section is I don't even have to run the, I don't even have to turn on the timer it will record in milliseconds how much time it took. And so let's start on the new GPT-5. So I'm gonna select this place and I'm gonna upload a test document. <clears throat> a document, which is going to be this one over here, like a CV document of my own. I'm gonna click on this open, um, close, open, <clears throat> close, and now I'm gonna click on test. This is happening with GPT-5. You can see that the processing is going on and any second now it will go ahead and extract information from this document using the instructions that I've given and give me the output over here. I have opted in for text over here. So basically it should give me a nice text type of an information. It is finished, but here's the number we're looking for. I wanna go and scroll down and over here it says it's taking 8,000 milliseconds, which is basically just eight seconds. This is pretty good, but but let's go to the right side over here, all right? This is the same type one, but using the model GPT-4.0. Over here, I'm gonna do the exact same thing. I'm gonna upload that exact same documentation. Um, clicking on close, I'm gonna click on test. Processing has started based on the instructions using that same document, but using GPT-4.0. And let's wait. Finished, scrolling down, all of it looks pretty much the same, but over here it is 13,002, which means it is 13 seconds. That is five more seconds slower than what GPT-5 was running. So this is just a really good side-by-side -side comparison on how we were able to go so much faster on GPT-5 than the GPT-4.1 clear distinction on performance. So hopefully this video has been useful to you because now you've firsthand seen how GPT version five has a good impact on Copilot Studio, both on building an agents and on the prompt site. 
and it's only been 24 hours since this has released, which is why it's still currently under experimental mode. So don't go production with it because I'm pretty sure they're going to actually add more enhancements and improvements to it. And as always, keep using Copilot Studio.